Okay, let's go ahead and get started on these lesson eight practice problems. For number one, the relationship between a distance <coughs> in yards, y, and the same distance in miles, which is denoted by m, is described by the equation y equals 1760 m. Okay, so in this particular equation, now let's just kind of make sense of what we have here on the page. Uh, what you got here is, you know, it doesn't hurt to plug this, sorry. Sometimes my pen acts weird. Uh, now the Y stands for uh, yards, and that's going to equal to 1760 times uh, the distance in miles, how many miles away it is. So if you take the number of miles and multiply that by 1760, that's going to equal how many yards that is, okay? And <coughs> <clears throat> now, uh, for part A, it says find measurements in yards and miles for distances by completing the table. All right, so we're just going to basically use that, use that equation right there. We're going to use that y equals 1760 times m. And so I'm just going to do 1760 times... One, you know, that's what I'm going to do there. I'm going to do 1760 times two. All right, and then on these two right here, I'm just going to divide by 1760. Okay, uh, and so when we do that, 1760, no, this is pretty simple right here, but the first one is going to be 1,760. That's like the constant proportionality right there. Number five is uh, number five is going to be 8,000. No, no, it's not. Uh, oh, I put the wrong number. That's what I just did there. Pardon me. That's not a. I wanted to put a five there because I knew it was going to come out to 8,000 something. But yeah, it should be 8,800. <clears throat> okay. And then when we do this one, 3,520 divided by 1760, that comes out to 2. That's, a, you know, just divided into 2 there. And then uh, 17,600 divided by 1760, that's a power of 10 right there. So that is going to be 10. Yeah, that divides by 10. Just move the decimal over one place to the left. Okay, so we've got through those. Now that's uh, pretty simple, just getting all those out. For B, is there a proportional relationship between a measurement in yards and a measurement in miles, M in uh, miles for the same distance? Explain why or why not. Now, I didn't even have to really, when you think about it, I really didn't even have to fill out this table. You can tell just by the equation itself, Y equals, you, know, you got Y equals 1760M. Just by that equation, just by the what it is, right here, that is your constant of proportionality. And if there's a constant of proportionality, that means it's proportional, okay? So 1760 like that, um, that, that makes it very easy because it's in this format. It's in the format of Y equals, this is kind of the general format, Y equals KX form. Y equals KX, K being your um, <clears throat> constant of Proportionality, okay, and then um, now your y and your x those could vary depending on what what letters we're designating, you know, for the for the table, or maybe it's a a graph. But <clears throat> that's it. So uh, now there's one thing that uh, would mess this up. Now let's say we had like let's say I had like plus I don't know forty two. Okay, let's see we had plus 42. And if I added that to that equation right there, plus 42. This kind of looks like it's all crowded together. Let me move this. All right, got to separate that. But if I have it like that, you know, if I have the equation y equals 1760m plus 42, or minus something, or whatever, you know, just plus or minus, really. <coughs> That is no longer a proportional relationship. 
I mean, it's it's definitely it's it's linear. You know, it's, it's it can be drawn as a, a straight line on a graph, uh, but there's a lot involved with doing that. But the thing I want to just make sure you know is that you don't want anything there. You just want you just want your coefficient to be your constant uh, proportionality, and you want this to be whatever the x value is. Now, in this case, it, we're using m for miles because that's what the x value represents. And so that is a constant proportionality. Um, we could also go over here. We can also go to our, our table and just just divide our y by our x. You know, and every time we divide our y by our x, we get the same number. We should get the same number. And if we don't, then it's not proportional. All right. And every one of these problems, every one of these division problems that I'm writing out here, you know, um, come out to <clears throat> 1,760. Every single one of them. Every single one of them comes out to 1,760. Which is a clear sign that we're talking about a constant of proportionality there, for sure. Okay? So that is that. Um, and number two. Uh, decide whether or not each equation represents a proportional relationship all right, so this kind of goes by what I was just saying. All right, for A, um, you kind of have that, you kind of have that equation right here. Like that could be, if that was just L equals, I, mean, I know it's not one, but let's say it's like one X. <coughs> That's in that Y equals KX form. But we have uh, 120 here, you know, we have 120. Now that's exactly not how it was, but this is not proportional. Just because it's not represented, it's just y equals, it's not in this y equals kx form. You know, we have something add or subtracted to it, and that just doesn't work. Okay, so that's not proportional. All right, for B, this one's talking about the total cost, t. <coughs> after 8% sales tax is added to an item's price, P. And all I need to see is this part right here. All we need to see that, and um, there's the constant proportionality. There's nothing being added or subtracted from it. There's something being multiplied, P, but that is indeed proportional. These are very easy to, to spot out, aren't they? I and mean, they're very, very easy to figure out once you kind of know what they look like. Uh, for C, the number of marbles each sister gets X when M marbles are shared equally among four sisters. X equals M over four. Now, being written that way, that might confuse some of you. So um, if you know me, you know that you can also write this like this. You can write that as one-fourth M, one-fourth multiplied by M, because we know that um, multiplying by one-fourth and dividing by four are both the same thing, right? They're both the same thing. So, um, I mean, same operation, more or less. But right here, what we have is a proportional relationship, for sure, okay? Because nothing is being added or subtracted to it, okay? There we have it. <clears throat> and then for D, um, volume of a rectangular prism whose height is 12 centimeters and base is square with the side lengths um, S centimeters, and you have V equals 12 S squared. Now that's almost, that is almost in that, um, in, in that uh, Y equals <coughs> KX form, but it's not, because it's not Y equals KX squared, not squared, because if you have a square there, that's a different graph altogether. That's going to be it's going to look like this. You know, if you're graphing it on the x and y axis, that's probably not very good right there, but something like that. You know, it's going to look like it's not going to be straight. It's not going to be linear. Okay, so this is not proportional. Okay, so don't confuse that as being proportional. All right. <clears throat> Moving on to the next one, number three. All right. So use the equation y equals 5 halves x to complete the table. So we're going to multiply everything in the x column, okay? 
all of our inputs right here. We're going to multiply everything in the x column by 5 halves, all right? And that's going to equal what's in the output column, which we don't have, but we're going to do that by doing the math, okay? So we're going to do <coughs> 5 halves times 2. I'm going to write that as 2 over 1. We're going to do 5 halves times 3. Write that as 3 over 1. And we're going to do 5 halves times 6. <coughs> and doing the math here, these cross cancel. And you're left with 5 over 1, which is just 5. So I'll put a 5 there. Put a 5 there. And then right here, nothing cross cancels, so I get 15 halves or 7 and a half. I'm just going to keep it in proper though. <coughs> so 15 halves. And then the 6 and the 2 can cross cancel. That can turn into, you can divide by 2. So 2 divided by itself is 1. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So we're left with 5 times 3, which makes 15. Okay? So um, now the question here is, is y proportional to x? Of course it is. And again, we probably didn't even need to fill out this table. All I really needed, all we really needed was that equation. That's, that equation is y equals kx form. That's it, k being our constant proportionality and nothing is being like added to it or subtracted. I mean, I guess you could have zero, like plus zero, but that's, um, that's completely different. All right, so when it fits in this form right here, y equals kx form, you're good. All right, so this is indeed proportional. All right, moving on to B here. <coughs> Use the equation y equals 3.2x plus 5 to complete the table. <clears throat> Is y proportional to x? All right, and uh, we can already say with pretty good confidence here that it is not, okay? It is not, just by the way that that equation is written. Get rid of that plus 5, now it's proportional. All right, put that plus 5 back on there, which is what, which is what it is anyway it's no longer proportional. But that doesn't mean we still cannot fill out the table. So this is not proportional. All right, and I put on here not proportional because there is no constant of proportionality. I mean, we're definitely going to be able to do y divided by x, but we're not going to get the same number. We're going to get a different number every time. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to do 3.2 times 1 plus 5. We're going to do 3.2 times 2 times 5. 3.2 times 4 plus 5. Okay. So I'm going to do that. So 3.2 times 1 is just 3.2. <clears throat> and 3.2 plus 5 is 8.2. So 8 and 2 tenths. So I'll just go ahead and put that in there. So that's 8 and 2 tenths. 3.2 times um, 2 is 6.4. 6 6.4 6 plus 5. 6.4 plus 5 is 11.4. 11 and 4 tenths. All right. And then uh, 3.2 times 4 is going to be 12.8. And then 12.8 plus 5 is going to be 17.8. <clears throat> All right. And then, you know, so that equation, um, you know, just the, f the format of it, it was not in that y equals kx form. Okay, we didn't have that. Um, and if it was, you know, if it was, another th a kind of another giveaway to whether something's proportional is just the way the, like, look at the way the, the, the numbers in the table kind of work with each other. Now, you'd think that going from 1 to 2, if it was a proportional relationship, if it was indeed a proportional relationship, for going 1 to 2, that's a doubling. 
That's doubling. 1 times 2 is 2. Well, doubling 8.2 should be 16 something, right? 16.4, which 11.4 is not. That is not. It's not the same thing. Okay, so that kind of shows you it's not proportional. Same thing right here. We're doubling here as well, times 2, but we're definitely not doubling here. That's not doubling. That's, I don't know, that's, that, that is not doubling. All right, so, but that's not the main reason. I'm just saying, like, you're, you know, when you have a proportional relationship, it becomes really easy, it becomes really easy to fill it in. Like, for instance, like, if, if I knew it was proportional, I really wouldn't even do the rest of the math here. I would just go, well, that's 8.2, then, uh, then this has got to be 16.4, you know? And since 2 uh, doubled is 4, I'm going to double that. I'm going to get 32.8. You know, if that's if, it's a big if, right? That's if it is proportional. That's if it is proportional. We can get away with it. We can do that. But um, not with this, okay? So those are the values that have to stay there. <clears throat> All right, number four, to transmit information on the Internet. Large files are broken into packets of smaller sizes. Each packet has 1,500 bytes of information. An, in, an equation relating packets to bytes of information is given by B equals 1,500 P, where P represents the number of packets and B represents the number of bytes. Okay, so how many packets would be needed to transmit 30,000 bytes of information? All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this, uh, where is it at? There it is, um, B equals, B equals 1500P, okay? All right, and so how many packets would be needed to transmit <clears throat> that number of, uh, how many, or how many, sorry, how many packets would be needed? So here, um, let me write it all over here. I'm going to put 30,000 where B is and make that equal to 1500 P. And then I'm going to divide by 1500. 1500 divide, divide, and that becomes 20. So that is the number of packets. So, oops, not B, P equals 20 packets. All right, for B, um, how much information could be transmitted in 30,000 packets? Okay, so this can be quite a big number, I would expect, but again, we're going to use this equation. We're going to use B equals 1,500 P, but this time, we're going to put 30,000 where P is. We're going to put that right there. So we're going to do 1,500 times <clears throat> 30,000. 30, now, um, 3 times 15 is, <clears throat> is 45. 3 times 15 is 45, and I'm going to add six zeros onto that. That's 45 million, 45 million uh, bits, right? That's, that's a lot of our bytes, I should say. And then, uh, what else? Uh, for C, each byte contains 8 bits of information. Write an equation to represent the relationship between the number of packets and uh, the number of bits. Okay, so, um, so if every packet, here's what I would do. I would just do 1,500 times 8. I'm going to do like that. I'm not going to put the zeros. So we got, uh, that's 40 and 12. So 12,000. 12,000. 